Hey there everyone, this is Aokao playing Anodyne. I think this is gonna be the finale. Uh, before I start anything- Whoa! We got a little guy up there now. Before we start anything, I feel I need to say that it is true, I am probably missing something. Uh, but at this point, after we do what we're gonna be doing today, I feel like I'm done. While there could be other things like, yeah, I think there's something called, like, you know, an NPC quest. Where you know, I'm supposed to find someone at the beach, and then they t they said, yeah, 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 I talked to a person on the meet. Like, I, uh, and they told me to find someone in the forest. I, I could do that. I just don't feel the need for it. Like, I feel just perfect, perfectly content and reasonable to just finish. And so I will. I will leave this game with something missing of some kind. However, I have all the cards. After doing what I'm going to do today, is going to leave me at the cards. And there are 14 objects. So, the fact that there's an empty tile here is on purpose, apparently. Cool, great, cool, cool, great. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't know what this missing puzzle that I didn't complete involving NPCs is, but it does not lead to a hole to be filled. And that's okay with me. So, yeah! I'm missing a card. There's a ledge there. That's pretty obvious. What do we do about it? My friend teased me about this before, saying that I would never figure it out on my own. They are correct. I I had no clue. Uh, so at some point early in the series, Code Gorilla sent me this wonderful guide, this personalized guide, and like you know, I did not really intend to use it. I accepted it just in case with no real intention of using it. And may I say, I kind of regret not using it. Like, I reg I, I'm a little saddened that I don't have to use it. Because it's really well done. With, like, layers of obscurity, like, before just spelling things out. Like, it's beautiful. It's beautifully made. Uh, the strategy guides still exist. They're just made by fans now. Uh, but! At the very least, I will be able to do here. So yeah, in need, confirming that I need to go up there. And the solution seems to be something called the wiggle glitch .txt. Let me read this. The wiggle glitch is a technique for moving through solid tiles along the edge between two screens. It works like this. Find a screen transition where you want to move through solid tiles. For example, to get to the 49th card, Go one screen down from the 49 gate, then use a transition to the right. So we'll be using this. Walk up to the transition, hold the direction into the wall. In this case, up. While still holding direction the entire time, cross the screen transition back and forth. Oh yeah! Each time you do this, we'll move a little bit forward into the wall. Once you've done six screen transitions, should be uh, move far enough to make it to the next tile. Stop transition for long and on to make it into the next tile. Repeat as many times as you want. So we're like sawing our way into the next tile over. Yeah, I would not have figured that one out. <laughs> Using this, this technique, uh, you can eventually make it to the platform that you can see from the, from the 49 card gate. On which is a chest containing the 49th card. Then you can either wiggle glitch back to the place you came from or return to Nexus and go back the long way. If my explanation is confusing, it is not. It is crystal clear. Try the wiki page for the Anodyne fandom wiki. When you've seen what's beyond a 49th card gate, open a folder labeled Beyond, which I already did. I just, for the sake of convenience, it's a very, very small TXT file, so. You got the feel. Whoa, look at that tile jump that happened. That was beautiful. Okay, I can't just. Yeah, this is, uh. pretty free to do. Once you know how to do it, it is extremely free. Apparently, using this advanced technique, you can beat the game in five minutes. I mean, it's not gonna be a 100% run, though. Alright, we did it. Yay! Red Square! <laughs> what a beautiful card! 49 cards! Oh, I can't see it. I want to see the four. Well, yeah. I guess it's because it doesn't have an image. That's funny. 
okay. <laughs> All right. So if I want to go there, I can't, but I can saw my way downwards. It works both ways. I'm guessing you can also saw horizontally. Well, like saw vertically to move horizontally. If it's a... Uh, if it's at a screen transition. This is wild. Like, I love this canonization of a glitch in the game. Say, so, no, yeah, it's in here. I guess I could fix it and remove it from the game. But how about I make it the last puzzle of the video game instead? And, like, honestly, the fact that this is nigh impossible to find on your own, even though someone clearly found it on their own before, but this is unlikely to happen to just a player. But this goes back to the extreme schoolyard rumor vibe that the entire pose game exude. Like, is this not extremely in character for, for an entire, basically, second game entirely based around the concept of doing silly things and literally changing tiles in the game as if I was manipulating an editor while I was not supposed to? Like, it fits. It fits the vibe, but... You just have to accept that, you know what, yeah, you'll probably need help to find this one. But I'm sure some people have figured it out on their own. It's not impossible. Oh, you're shot! You didn't see that one coming, Rock, huh? Alright! Really? Hi. So I won't work here. I can read the email from the back of the computer. Well, when you've seen what's beyond the Fortnite gay, open the folder labeled Beyond. I did that already. Check it out, I just did that. There is no 50th card to thank you for playing at time. <laughs> ba ba da ba da ba da ba! Alright, so this is the end, end, end. Again, I'm sure there's more. I'm okay with that. But I feel like I've done what I wanted to do. Uh, let's, like, at least beat the game proper, though. Let's, uh, re redestroy uh, our old pal, Briar. Yeah, it happens. Me too, Sage. So, what is this game? I, I, okay, before I even start about this, I feel like I have to talk about the extreme difference between the normal game and what happens in the post game. Because the, the normal game is pretty interesting, I feel like. I called it a surrealistic adventure at some point, I'm pretty sure. Or at least I described it like that to a friend, so close enough. Uh, and I stand by that, if you understand. So, in a world of art, surrealism is... Uh, well, part of its uh, task is to explore the unreality of dreams. What makes dreams dream? Like, the weird lapse of logics. And strange creation that the mind creates inside a dream. And I feel like this game absolutely fits the bill as a surrealistic game. I don't know if it would make a great surrealistic painting, but because it is a game, I think it is an extremely appropriate label that I have given it. Oh my god, just hit the dust that's behind it already. Oh, you didn't... That's my fault. I didn't notice I didn't undust. That's on me. 
But yeah, like, the, the way you just voyage through realities that basically have, like, nothing really to do with one another is extremely evocative of dreams and the very loose structure between, you know, worlds where worlds are basically completely undisconnected. Like, I think captures the idea of a dream in video game form. I don't know why that worked. I don't know why that made the flower explode. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> like, I just think it worked. It's super neat. And there is a story. It definitely feels like a personal story. Uh, to me, it's clear we're in some kind of either dream or psychic state of young. And the various people are, you know, various... In the various places are facets of him. That much is pretty obvious. And the fact that the true line... You finished the game with over 37 cards! All health and broom and the rest of the Chivo cuts off. But okay, 100%. Basically. Um, I need your help to not drown. Possibly me. And that's the thing. There's a lot that is left to interpretation within the story as told by the game. And that is clearly on purpose. Like, that is clearly the intent. You... This is n almost... I mean, I'm sh I think there's a genuine story, but it is also a framework to sort of work out your own story through the framework that is there. And that's pretty neat. The game itself, like, what it requires of you is relatively minimal. Oh, you can't go back and save. I cannot change my stuff to change the swapper. Ah well. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's personal while being approachable. And I just think that a lot of the asset is just very creative. And it's a very fun dreamscape to play around through. And then you beat the game. And then you unlock the ability to use swap all over the place. And... Tonally, it becomes something so different. It is not a dreamscape that you are free to explore anymore. It is an extremely explicit video game world where you're playing a video game and you're gonna be going around the video game, breaking the code, going outside of the design space, and you get rewarded with things like debug room and like asset place, like where Abandoned assets are put and like the, the game over screen that I've never been to because I forgot to say no at any point <laughs> Like like It's just completely there. It feels like a completely different game that you almost have to approach as a re-beginning But that requires you to have played the main game first for it to make any sense because Awareness of the general game world is required But it's still so funny to me and very interesting to me just how opposite the two are In tone and what it expects you to do and like yeah, like you get things you know Like you get gamer pranks like jump on a square 20 times it turns out or wait in a room an hour and almost 50 minutes Explore out of bound, map things out in your mind out of brown while maneuvering a very glitchy spot. It's like, it's neat, it's super cool. And a piece of me wonders, and this is where things take a bit of a surprise twist, not really, but a little piece of me wonders if it's to the detriment of the, the first game, for lack of a better word. The game where you explore the dreamscape itself and meet strange characters and fight off strange creatures and animals. I feel like in my brain sort of started to take a back seat. And I feel like a lot of my feelings of my initial run have more or less been usurped by the much more meta second run through. And, I mean, at the time while I was playing, I didn't mind. Like, I was having- I was having a blast. I was having a lot of fun. But now I wonder, like, I feel a little bit bad. <laughs> I'm sure this is not gonna be necessarily a universal, like, result. Like, I'm sure some people are 
that's not gonna happen. But it happened to me. And I don't know how I feel about it. But, I mean, it happened, so... That's the world we live in. <laughs> it's fine. It's perfectly okay. By the way, there's nothing in winter and in summer, like, out of bounds. Never ended up being shown, because there's nothing to show. Um... And, uh, yeah. Anodyne. I enjoyed myself. Yes, I am interested in playing the sequel. It's my understanding that the sequel is very different while also being very required. That's what I was told by my friend. Very different game, although, you know, it touches on... Touches on similar things, probably, but also, yeah, like, knowledge of the first game is necessary. And they went, they, they went so far as to say that... Anodyne 2 appears to assume that the post-game run where you explore outside the boundaries of the game is canon and important. So that's fun, but yeah, this is not going to be next. Uh, this is going to be at some point in the future, but yes, I am absolutely interested. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that was my playthrough of Anodyne. Coming up next, we're just done with, um, with, uh, with the GameCube. Well, shut up, we're going back on the GameCube. Slightly different game, though. And yeah, I think, and what was maybe hidden to me is that I think, so, so while I was doing my research for what to do next, remember the stairs that I found in the garden that just looked like a stair tile? So apparently, if you talk to a string of NPCs, uh, eventually that stairs becomes an actual exit, and you go at a place, and the place does not, like, I didn't really look, but there's no cards, there's no question marks there, so I was like, okay, there's nothing, like, funny. I think it's actually hints you at, um, one of the outside worlds I visited. Not the white zone in the, um, in the windmill, but, uh, the, um, other outside zone that you get in the temple, the forest temple. So I found it naturally. <laughs> so just using just the obvious desire to explore unmarked cubes on the map. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. Like it's there. Uh, I I I feel like I've went around repeated passages across the world to talk to various NPCs enough in TTYD. So I'll give Anodyne a pass on that one. Sorry, Anodyne! I did enjoy your game, though! This was fine. That was- this was great. Like, as far as, like, what you do in the video game, it's a little, like, basic? Oh, uh, the bosses get pretty wild, though. But, like, a lot of the game is, and you know, a lot of empty screens that do nothing. But the- the flavor, the sauce that everything is bathed in, Yes, I will save again. More than, you know, makes up for it. And, uh, it's pretty good. Look at that! There we go! Three guys on the screen. I don't know if there's more. I don't know if you can get more guys on the screen. If I'm told there can be more guys on the screen, maybe I'll come back and make sure I get the fourth guy up there. But until then, this is the finale. This is Cow. Thank you everyone for watching and enjoying the ride with me. Yeah.